Like give and take. You you give the game something, the game gives you something. Right. Just make sure you have some. Just make sure you have balance. Don't lose yourself completely. But I know some artists are like, oh fuck the masses. But yo, the masses are people too. Give them something yeah. here and there. It's Chucky online. Listen, it's different today. It's different. I don't support Tottenham. I'm a United supporter, but I will hold my hands up and say I am in a beautiful stadium, yeah? A very beautiful stadium. There's a lot going on. I know there's events out there and all this type of stuff. So if you hear music, just know that there's an event going on. But more so, there's an event going on in here. Jason, OC, mm -hmm. two-time NFL Super Bowl winner yes, talked sir. to you very nicely i appreciate that yeah i appreciate talked that the tone really, really. changed yeah, 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 yeah did, I, right I yeah, yeah i like yeah. it because you know what it was <laughs> see when we did the skills challenge and i realized that that's what had happened i didn't deep it do you get what i'm saying like <laughs> th like i knew you are yeah like i'm with the guys but you know like sometimes some people say oh like this that's the guys isn't it mm. but you have to take a moment to realize no it's really the guys. Yeah. Like, you really did this. In there, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We're about that. You're, yeah, you're about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some better than others. I'm not going to tell you who's better, but we, we all know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we always, I feel like, a lot of the time from, from the UK and that as well, we hear a lot about people's stories, um, their, their, their come-ups and all of that from the US. But I love talking about some of ours. Do you know what I mean? I've told you a few times since I've been here, since we've been doing this, that we got some special artists here. We got a special thing going on here as well. And um, after doing the skills challenge where I learned a lot about your world, I'm bringing you into mine. Mm -hmm. And I got one of my guys with me, Hardy Caprio. What are you saying, my brother? I'm good. I'm easy. I'm easy. You could, you know, you could give me the same boom. <laughs> <with Steph. laughs> I'm not done. Yeah. I'm not done. I'm not done. Like, I'm not done. Yeah, go I'm ahead, not yeah. done. Someone I've known for a little while. And what I like about this guy here, yeah, is that I think a lot of people, whether they took their biases away, whether they took whatever it was that they may have away, yeah, and look at what this dude has done, they will say, summertime. This is someone who usually has the place on absolute mm. smash mm. to bits, yeah? Hardy Caprio is here with me. I think you was missing this summer, though. Yeah. Lightly. Do you know COVID, man? You get me? You got to read the room something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it weren't the same. I couldn't give you the same thing. You, you know? wasn't outside enough. Yeah, we weren't outside like that. You wasn't outside. I was outside, but were they outside? <laughs> like, exactly. I, I do it for the people, you get me? Yeah. It's like, what are we going to do? They weren't living their best life. They weren't, exactly. life weren't improving fast. Like, I just had to read the room. Nah, nah, nah. You get but, me? but on a real though, singles wise, you've been doing like really, really well. And I know that you had a time where you, I, I, I don't know what was going on with you because a couple of times we'd had some conversations and mm. you was almost just trying to figure a lot of things out and it seems like you had done that and I'm really surprised now I'm looking at what you've done and I'm saying right my man still hasn't even he ain't even got a, a proper album out right now yeah you know, you're working on that right yeah 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 finish I'm bro I'm just here like this is recreational now thank you for coming through my bro yeah um and what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about like just the early come up for you yeah mm. I know that obviously you ventured into the grime world and stuff like that I yeah. used to see like quite a few videos of you on online just spitting bars and whatnot. And I feel like this is a, for me, mm. maybe as a as I'm getting older, I miss that a lot. Like, cause I feel like I don't see that so much with the young gen and I have to yeah. accept that like, things are very different now in regards to that, right? Yeah. Like you came from the era of literally having a microphone in front of your face mm. and, and flexing and almost having to try to be the guy in a room of a bunch of guys yeah talk on that what the energy the atmosphere well for for me grime was like grime was the gateway grime was like our first genre so grime was like our hip-hop as you can say like you put on the beat and then you just go so for um back when i started there wasn't really money in rap like no one thought we would be here so quick like even the people that made it in rap, you had like one person or two people that made it. So 
like we were just I think we were just doing it with a dream because that's what we wanted to do and it's just like yo let's get out of our situation because obviously most of us are from like poor situations so um it's definitely not like a, it's not like America I wouldn't know what an American come up, come up is like I don't know what the projects is like but us it's like everything is England small so you you have like the confined spaces. So you got estates. Do you know that? Like, do you lot know mm -hmm. estates? Yeah, you got estates next to rich areas. So we were always angry. Like most of us are angry because it's like, yo, you come out of your house, you're poor, but you can't be poor together. You got to look at the the rich people. Mm -hmm. So you're mad. You're like, yo, I got to change my situation. So I remember like when I used to do things like that. I was like, I don't care. I didn't have like a marketing plan. I didn't have any of those things. I was just like, I'm just gonna rap and show these lot that I'm the hardest. That was my energy towards the situation, to be honest. Mm. Uh, you keep saying like back then, and you look so young. I don't. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little confused, when was man. When was, <laughs> when was back sat, then? By the way, just off camera, you know, he sat down and said, "Yo, I'm drinking coffee now. Tell everyone I'm old." I'm like looking at this brother. What are you talking about? <laughs> Crazy, but let me ask you. Let me ask you this then, yeah. Because a lot of um, artists or rappers, hip hop artists, yeah, grime usually come from struggle. Yeah. Do you think you have to come from that to be a good MC, a good rapper? Um, not necessarily, but I think it's what drives the people. Because sometimes I think you know they say it's not always the best person that makes it; it's the one that has the drive. So I know some people that were like they was, they were good but they were comfortable. Mm. Like some of them were like, when we were younger, I wasn't the best. I know someone that was the best mm. and he just didn't have the drive to make it. Like he probably went home and like, it was nice. Mm. It weren't that bad. Mm. Mm. Well, you go home and it's like, oh, I don't want to be here. Let's go again. Do you get me? And mm. we keep on adding. So yeah, I think, I think that's what drives us to go the extra mile, especially in a time when there wasn't money. So what's actually driving you? other than you want to be the first. But that, see, even when you go back to that era as well, yeah? Yeah. Obviously, things are so different to how it is now. See, like, my little brother, mm. he can, my little, I got a, a long, younger brother that's 15 years old. So he's seeing a certain level of success yeah. that, like, I didn't see when I was young and you didn't see when you was young. Yeah. But I think them times when you was doing your thing, Mm. The the what we deemed as success was so different then because it was like even that even the level of success that we may have saw there wasn't like the finances wasn't up like that really exactly. the, 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 what I'm it was it was non-existent mm. the fin <laughs> it was non-existent like your rap your favorite rapper probably worked a job mm. Mm. so it wasn't yeah it definitely was it weren't that. So what made you continue then? Like just the love of the. Uh, I said I'm a hustler, so I done. So I went uni for accounting. I was just like, look, if I can make a little capital from rap, like I don't have to make the most, but I can then go flip that. I can go invest that and keep on keep on doing it because I didn't necessarily have to do it like the ones that came before me, who might have done everything. I was just looking at it for like holistically. I was just like, yo, like, let me do my passion make smart investments and keep on reinvesting it in my passion. Because I guess you could say we still, we, um, I looked at Jay-Z a lot when I was growing up and I was just like, yo, like these lot made something out of like the, the merchandise, everything. There were so many ways to make money from it. So if you, maybe if you applied yourself better, we could have capitalized off it way more, which I guess, um, I wouldn't say that we did, but streaming came just in the nick of time that I didn't necessarily have to do that. And I still do that, but now there's more more, more to work with. Mm. When did your idea to go into finance and get that degree happen? Was that before rapping? Did you think that that was a pursuit that you might take or mm. at the same time? So I'm 25 now, isn't it? so let me just put everything into context. I'm 25 now. Man said he's old. <laughs> <laughs> back, that back coffee, then. man, the coffee will do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> So um, when I was 17, I, um, I was in like sixth form and I was thinking, oh, rah, like after 18, you, I think most of us think that's the end. That, so where are you going now? So 18, I was going to university. I was like, All right, if I'm in university, I still, I'm still not really in the real world. I'm not in the big wide world. So let me apply myself when I get there. But if I go to university, I don't want to take something as intense as law or medicine 
which will take up my whole time. So I was like, how can I do something that works back into what I do? And then I thought, yo, if I do accounting, that's gonna work back into that's gonna work back into what I do, like oversee your taxes. You know, a lot of rappers get that hard tax bill income. Well, a lot of people in the entertainment sector mm, get that hard that tax first bill. year. Yeah. yeah. So it's like let me be aware of these things so I can always like overlook. That's you know what, yeah? I think that's such a sick thing. Even to this day, when I'm sitting and I meet like young artists and that, I'm always like, after conversations that I might have with them, on the low, I pull them to the side and enough times I'll say to them, yo, you're looking after the P, remember the tax man's coming, like, because even though I know obviously people have managers and they have people around them or whatever, sometimes you don't, it's like, you don't really deep it until someone else actually from the outside might turn around to you and say, bro, like this is something that you, 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 you need to do because you people are coming from environments where they're not used to money and I'm sure it was probably even the same for you right like a hundred percent you know 100%. coming from where you came from mm. and then being making money and stuff like that that must have been did anyone actually speak to you about finances <laughs> yeah well I came from a, a different situation you know my um I came from Nigeria and my father was like very strict on like all of that type of stuff. So we were very well educated even before we started playing ball. But I think I wanted to ask you where that mentality comes from, like your mentality to go to school and all that type of stuff, even though you're a rapper. Because a lot of people don't, you know, yeah. they, they won't so, have that. They don't know that. So my dad was education obsessed right. as well. So like from five years old, six years old, I was reading that. Like, I read Roots in like year three, which means I was nine. So I was just, books Books was everything yeah. in my household. And I think, um, so I've always been naturally like an academic. Mm. So even when I've done something, I was just like, all right, cool. I still want to rap, but let me use let me use this way of thinking because now I'm more equipped than, like you say, the stereotypical rapper. Yeah. So that's that's where it came from. An African household, like it's just instilled in you. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. I love it. You said something earlier, and I, I thought about the, the echo chamber and kind of the pressure you, that you were speaking on about being in the estate, yeah. looking across the street, mm -hmm. seeing wealth, like that day to day, that, that uh, handling that. And then you said what it did for you, how it motivated you. Yeah. Do you see a 50-50 split, or are you just an outlier? Do most people take it and in, in the negative implications of being there kind of dictate I've, what they do? I think, it's, it's sad to say, I think sometimes it breaks people. More, mm. more time it breaks people because like we could all have, without us getting into conspiracy realm, like you see people get materialistic, like some of like people from poorer backgrounds feel the need to look wealthy, mm. to feel comfortable in these environments rather than just embrace, just not embracing, but accepting this is the position and how to change it. They'd rather look like they've changed it, mm. which then sets them back. And then you get people in that cycle of debt, people, yeah, credit cards, so many things, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's a, if you start looking at it in a um, wider thing, I think it breaks more people sometimes because, you know, a lot of people, we all come from maybe situations where we're not taught to be secure in ourselves. Like, we're not taught to accept ourselves as we are. We're always like, yo, you need to be better. You need to be better. So if you can't... For me, I think the the most important breakthrough I had as a person was like, if, if, you, can't, if you can't give yourself the truth, mm. then, then who can? And like, how can you change that? If you can't face the truth yourself, how can you change that? So yeah, I think um, to answer your question though, to go back, yeah, I think it probably does more harm than good. Interesting dynamic though. <laughs> it yeah, really is. Yeah, like when you look in, well, I lived in Nigeria, I lived in America also, right? Yeah. If you look in America, like the hood is like, they keep that away from mm. the rich people's <laughs> area, yeah. right? It's like, it's in a completely different place, right? Yeah. But here, just like you said, it's like, some rich people, and then like their states are like right there. Are they right? Sorry to inter interrupt. But are they not? Is that not changing a little bit though? Because I hear that like, say, I kept hearing people talking about like um, the Bronx and that. 
or elements of New York City, like, like starting that. starting to become yeah, starting to become really expensive now. Mm. And I think that that's like it's mad. You look at Peckham, for example, yeah? yeah. It's still mad to me when I hear, like, I might meet a girl and she's like, oh, I'm going out for drinks in Peckham tonight. Yeah, and yeah, I'm like, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> I still can't get past. What do you mean you're going yeah. to Peckham for drinks tonight? Yeah. Because I know I know how Peckham was. was yeah. And I know even still how it can be, but elements of that have changed now. You know? Yeah, definitely. I Where in America are you two from, sorry? I'm from Los Angeles. Okay. Nigeria, man. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. I lived in Atlanta, Georgia for 20-something years, but mm. I just, I don't, I don't, I love America, I just don't represent it. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. 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 He always kept it interesting in the locker room. Oh, yeah, his perspective. <laughs> Straight up. It uh, all, always did. Your background is really fascinating and how, uh, you know, obviously you, you're going to get this degree in finance and accounting yeah. while in the studio, in the lab, right? Yeah. Um, so I have a, a, a master's degree in finance. Yeah. And oh, congrats. Yeah. shout out to you. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. That. No. no. Uh, he won up to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. No. I like how he did that as well. No, no, no. That was smooth. No. That was smooth. That was finance smooth. and account, two different <laughs> things, though. And I don't mess with that. Um, I wonder, like, I got that degree because I knew I was going to do that when I retired mm -hmm. from football. And the yeah. conversations we would have in the locker room uh, yeah. with your trusted group of friends on finance, you could have those and, and um, you had people you went to. Yeah. Do you see people in the industry knowing your background? Do they ask you questions? Are they trying to get that information from you? Because you obviously have um, it. I think there's a select few. They're smart. There's like, you get the smart youngsters and everything, but I feel... Yeah, definitely, actually. You definitely get a few asks, yeah, what's this, what's this? I ask, I still ask as well because there's things that I won't know because I didn't do the whole the whole certification to become an accountant. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it just depends on the group that you're, depends on the group of artists that gravitate towards you. But definitely, I think I've, I've spoken about it definitely like too many times this week, in this last week or the last two weeks. So, yeah, man, I think some artists really... Once they have that one or two years in the game, they're like, yo, I need to learn about this. Mm -hmm. yeah. talk, talk, get, talk, talk to them about like the time where like things really started to change for you, though, where you started to feel that there was a, uh, a shift happening. What, in life? Yeah, and musically, though. Um, oh, what, as a scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I from your perspective, though. As a scene, I think, I think I'd attribute everything to Stormzy. I think like yeah. it's fair to say that we wouldn't have been here without Stormzy kicking down the doors because he just done everything for like two, three years. He just done everything right because before then, I feel like in the media, it was like we were all aggressive black men. Do you get what I mean? And mm -hmm. even even what coincided with Kanye West bringing Skepta out, um, Skepta and the grime scene out at his show to perform all day. I think it was just slowly, it was almost like a revolution. But then Stormzy done something where he was just friendly. Mm. He showed, he embraced his friendly side because all of us, like, again, like, no one's a gangster 24 7. Mm. <laughs> you get what I mean? And he just said, yo, I'm going to make tell some jokes as well. And I think that showed people that, okay, people in the hood or in the ends are human as well. And I think that really allowed the ma mainstream to warm up to other characters. So after that, you have people like Dave, who is very introspective. Yeah. And Dave like really told the story. And it's like, oh, look at this young man and everything he's gone through. Our voices started getting heard with more and more. And then you have Jay Huss, who just mm. made everyone feel good. And... Yeah, like, I think everything was just a culmination of maybe that like, Storms, Dave, Huss, and everyone just basically, everyone was hungry at the time as well. So I think we all saw each other, like, we were all in close proximity of each other. So, like, before, before we blew up, I remember Storms, he dropped me home, and, like, he's dropped me home in an Astra, and he was just like, yeah, I'm going to, like, I'm going to blow up, let's just focus. And I was like, it's like cool, say no more. And then I saw him blow up that year. I was like, fuck. I, do <laughs> I was like, fuck, like, I've got to do this shit. And then um, Dave lived next to one of my, my brethren, one of my close brethren, like three doors down. And then he started blowing up. And I was like, 
at that time, I was getting like hundreds of thousands of views, but I think we were all in the melting pot and we were all like, mm. yo, if he's doing it, I'm doing it. Yeah. Mm. And if I'm doing it, someone's looking at me like, no, if he's doing it, mm. I'm doing it. And I think that was where all the competition started, all that. It was friendly competition, I think, as well. And I think it was just, it just bubbled up to become like an explosive thing where I think the younger generation now are benefiting off that as well. Like everyone broke down the door in some way because it's like, what was my impact? I remember the first time I'd done like a song that broke through, I don't know why, I posted it on Twitter. I said, summer starts now. Mm. And that was like the introduction of the feeling that I brought to the mainstream. And it was just, it just it just took up took off from there and i remember like there was a lot of not i wouldn't say backlash but people were like no nah, like this ain't really gonna last this isn't really gonna be here for too long because they hadn't seen that vibe usually rappers were angry and then i think when i went university i kind of calmed down i saw like we saw girls from west london so i'm from south london Croydon. And, but we saw girls from West London and they didn't really like us angry rapping. So I was just like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't have to be angry. Let me try something. And obviously, I used to like Cameron and Mace when I was growing up. Mm. So I was like, yo, let me try this because mm. this is actually what I like mm. in my spare time. And then me and Ace and done the song Unsigned and that really, I think that really cemented, this is what Hardy brings to the, this is what Hardy brings to it as well. So I think all of us have like our, all of us are very versatile, but I think that was how I stamped it. And then everyone just made their stamps in the scene. Everyone was like, this is my thing. This is my thing. This is my thing. And then, yeah, it just, it just blew up in it, fair mm. to say. And I think mm. even still it trickled back to the older generation, like say gets. Yeah, definitely. Cause, Cause it's like once, I think once everyone got used to our accent, because I think that was a major thing. I remember girls used to be like, I don't listen to UK rappers, like, da -da 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 -da, that sounds corny. But once you got used to our accent, it's like everyone was like, yo, these, these, these niggas are spitting. Yeah. Mm. Like, these men are, like, these men are hard. So, yeah, I think, yeah, it's just been a crazy, crazy three periods, mm. three moments. A few years, isn't it? Well, bro, longer than that, man. Yeah. Because I've seen so much of it, and I think that, like, even just going off what you were saying, mm. I think the the influence that like Tiny Temper had on pop culture, mm. and like yeah. when he came through, that that was a bit of a it was a shock in it because I, I and I know that they you know they talk about this like they've talked about this before when they did that pass out record that was that was it wasn't supposed to be as big as it ended up being. But that was like a moment where that kicked down certain doors because he was like a nice, he was a really nice guy and he is yeah. a nice guy. And so then that put him in places where he could be in, he could be in spaces as a young black guy who comes from a certain place mm. um, and almost kick that stereotype away of like, right, they're not, yeah. they're all young, angry, yeah. black yeah. men. Make, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? And so those, like, these are all the little dots that connected mm. into it being getting to that stormsy moment and it really then go in where yeah. it is. tiny the tiny temper records those broke through in america like yeah. there were big records over there i don't think i've really heard that many other like uk rap artists mm. break through like that over there in terms yeah, yeah yeah i mean like like from a pop perspective yeah i think now though <clears throat> and you could correct me if uh, I'm wrong here, but I think that was an era where people would come from grime, <clears throat> they was doing all of that, and then there was like, there wasn't a way, it was very difficult to look, to measure success, because in America you had rappers that were making however many millions do, be it doing rap music, yeah, but here it wasn't really so much like that, and when you had someone like Tiny um, come kick down the door, the music changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. There was like a, a lot of artists that said, you know what, let me just change up a little something and try and get a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And we supported it because it was like, it was still good to see, you know, people that came from a certain environment making money and be like reaching a certain height that we hadn't really seen before. But we needed that to get to the point of an art artist then saying, you know what, I'm gonna stick to doing this. I'm gonna stay doing this and I'm gonna bust through doing that. Because once the kids and stuff start seeing what's happening over here, 
naturally they start looking up what's happening down here mm. what's going on over here yeah. and then now you, you know you can essentially be yourself yeah and have that same level of success and i think now when you look at artists that have gone to america a lot a lot may not necessarily have had that pop success but they've got pockets of fan bases that you know they can go and tour to for example yeah. little sims is doing a tour in america at the moment dave he's yeah. upped his um shows in america so he's doing like 2000 cap which is amazing yeah uh skepta mm -hmm. had his moment where he was out there and stuff so it's like it's it may not it's not the you know, you know the song on the adverts mm. but there's the fan bases out yeah. there now, yeah. i think everyone's ambition has changed towards mm. it because now it's like do you know what we're just we're just british let's right. embrace that because sometimes it's like to really get you know sometimes to be at the height of mainstream like you got to sacrifice quite a few things and it's like sometimes like I, what like just even how if if i speak completely credent to you some people might not understand what i'm saying because it's like our slang is so deciphered like someone that's really from south right now that's doing well k trap if mm. i play him to just my friends from bromley who are just like they're just middle class they don't understand what he's saying but we're so comfortable it's like we understand it now mm. So like we don't care if anyone mm. understands it no more because it's like you can make a living just by being yourself. So so I think it's like, and sometimes that's where the flavor comes from. Do you mm. get what I mean? Like it's like if we all started being well-spoken rappers, it might not be the same. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes it's like the lingo, the mm. accent, all of that is what makes us us. And I think sometimes. It, sh it probably shouldn't be understood. Like, this is a um, wild take, but you see Kendrick to Pimp a Butterfly. Mm. I liked Kendrick Good Kid Mad City. I didn't understand to Pimp a Butterfly because yeah. I never grew up with jazz in my house. Mm. Right. So I was like, what is, I was like, what's this? Mm. Right, right. And then I'll just go listen to Getz because Getz to me is the closest thing we have to Kendrick. Mm. And Ke like, Getz might take, Getz might take jungle like inspirations mm. or like garage inspirations and I remember I got um, a sample cleared, uh, Mini Ripperton, Loving You Still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loving You. Yeah. And when I sent it over to them, they were like, we don't even understand what's going on. <laughs> they're like, what is this? What genre is this? I was like, oh, it's garage. They're like, just clear it. Just, just, just clear it. Mm. But so, I'm, so sometimes them not understanding is what, it, what is amazing over here. Because mm. I don't know how to explain garage to someone from America, is it? Yeah. And I think... Over time, you'll have the artists that really have that pop ambition, but I think it's good that everyone's just accepting that identity as well, because it's like, we all contribute, we're all pillar stones. Like, I don't really know people that listen, I only know other rappers or other music enthusiasts that listen to Wu-Tang. Mm. And it's like, Wu-Tang, I don't think ever penetrated here on the mainstream level, correct me if I'm wrong. No, they had, um a gravel pit that did a little something. That did a little something, but it's but more, probably, yeah. it was more underground. So yeah. it's like, but you don't want Wu-Tang to be doing like the LL Cool J song. Nah. Let's let's just let Wu-Tang be Wu-Tang. There's no way you're 25, bro. It's yeah. not, <laughs> it's not even like, do you know what? He's on music, it ain't man. Possible. Still, he's a music man. We spoke on the phone the other day for a long time. <laughs> Say something in a lot of what you were saying was tying into this quote I, I, heard, I read from you that said about trusting yourself. Yeah. And the best players I've ever been around yeah. trust themselves mm -hmm. in the game, in a moment, uh, when all the chips are on the line. Uh, Osi, my best friend, um, said when, when we first got into the media and I was struggling and worried about things, he said, mm -hmm. J-Bell, you got to trust yourself. Yeah. You keep going back to that, like um, being authentic, trusting yourself. How does that happen? How does that how, take me through that process when you're making music. Like, yeah. how do you always stay in a zone where you trust in and believing in you? Um, I think you need to block out the noise. Your um, the people, your immediate circle probably have the most effect. And I think in this social media day and age, that's the hardest thing to do. I think that's why rap has become such a microwave microwave genre because it's like people come up there's so much noise someone saying yo the next thing he has to do is this the next thing he has to do is this so i think for me personally i think you're either ignorant or you know how to you know how to block out the noise so for me when i'm working 
I'm off social media. Mm. Like, I'm Spot off like social that. media. I might even not listen to music for three days. So I know what I want to make when everything is washed away. Mm. Do you Detox know what? vibes. Yeah. I, so mm. I usually never bring up personal stuff like this. My daughter's mother's a singer. Yeah. And she said the same thing. She's like, I don't listen to music. Mm -hmm. She's like, I don't listen to what's hot. I just go in and do what I want to do. Yeah. That is the, Maybe she knows what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. She does. She does. <laughs> I think that's the best way. you Because you stay in tune. I think every artist is like quite sensitive to, to information. If you're an artist and you care about your career, you might look at what's happening there and it might just influence you 2%. Mm. But that 2% might take away the 2% that makes you special. Right. So it's like, yo, just... Just get your own space, create your own world, make sure the people around you respect your your um, character and just keep on going. Because I know some artists' friends, like me and me and a couple artists speak about it a lot. Their friends might bring up to them, oh, yo, this you got to do something like this. And then I tell them, no, you don't. Just keep on your keep on your journey. Because you if you especially if you gained a bit of traction, it means you know what you're doing. Mm. Like people want to mm. hear your voice. The hardest thing to do is get people to put you in their playlist. If more than like 20,000, 10,000 people have put you in your playlist, you're almost set up for life. Now you just got to carry on your journey. It's mm. not a one year journey. It's not a two year journey. It can be 20 years if you want it to be. It can be 30 years if you want it to be. Because Jay-Z's here doing 444. Mm. Like he's, he had reasonable doubt. Like, and. And still giving compound it. interest, and still yeah. giving cold <laughs> verses. Exactly, and I think it would be, it would, it wouldn't be as impressive if Jay Z was still trying to be the person from Reasonable Doubt. Right. No. You know your life has changed. Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. So yeah, man, I think just blocking out the noise. I would say I would ask that would then um, influence me to ask, how do you lot keep your head amongst everything? Because you know, once you get to being successful, there's so many. There's so many vices that come your way and there's so many distractions that come your way. So how do you, how did you two deal with it? Mm. <laughs> you had more than me. <laughs> <laughs> you had more pressure. Uh, yeah, I think um, <clears throat> for me, it was probably mostly understanding that it was, it's, it's so short lived, mm. right? Our careers were very, very short lived. Yeah. And so because once you truly understand that and you know that you only have like a, a really short period of time mm. to be able to do this, it makes you, or it, at least it should make you focus a, a completely yeah. different way. Like you're a musician, you can make music for like 20, 30, 40 years. Like we yeah. could, yeah. we could probably play, if you're lucky, you know, five, six, seven, eight years, right? Okay. And so you had to really focus in. Now a lot of people don't do that. They're like, mm. they just go wild out, go do whatever, and they're, mm. they're in and out. But the ones who understand that, you yeah. take advantage and you take full advantage of that little short period of time yeah. and you're able to succeed. Oh, she's right. Delay gratification. I think yeah. the best people in athletics I've been around are people that like, I will, I will sacrifice it all mm. to live like a king. Yeah. And a lot of people can't do that. They want to have both at that same moment and it mm. truly is impossible. It you, is impossible. You have to sacrifice so much um, mm. that you, you really just have to be locked in and zoned out. Mm. And yeah. to your point about blocking out the noise, uh, mm -hmm. blocking out all of the things that people are interested in that are not on your path. I think that's very difficult to do. Yeah. I commend you for that because, like I said, the best players and people I've been around, they have the ability to do that. Regardless if they fall off, they, they get back on their path and continue yeah. down the right road. But what if you could, if you could sacrifice just a little bit of your authenticity, right, yeah. for massive success? Would you do it? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I think you got to, I think, uh, uh, what I would say to a lot of artists, I think most artists that get to the position that I get to actually do do that. Mm. Mm. And they might not say, they might not say to you, yo, like, I've done this for this, mm. but they did. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Because, like, again, uh, again, I'm going to keep using Jay-Z, but. He's like, truthfully, I would have been rhyming like common sense, but ever since this happened, I've been <laughs> rhyming like common sense. <laughs> right. Cause you, it's, sometimes it's just yeah. like, about like, say a uh, fun fact is, like say my song Best Life, I've not played that in my car more than four times. I didn't make that for me. Mm. Like, I was just like, I know the world wants this, yeah. mm. but I didn't make that for me. Mm. I was just like, but 
I'm going to be the mouthpiece to deliver that. Right. And it's like, yo, like, give and take. You you give the game something, the game gives you something. Right. Just make sure you have some, just make sure you have balance. Don't lose yourself completely. But obviously, compromise is always good here and there, it? Because, like, I know some artists are like, oh, fuck the masses. But, yo, the masses are people too. Give them something yeah. here and there. And I'm sure they'll reward you. Go dip in, dip out. Someone that was really good at that was Wiley. Right. Like, Wiley will come back. Wiley, Wiley's, like, one of the pioneers in grime he'll do like three grime tapes and then give you one pop song yeah and the pop song is everywhere yeah. and then he'll go back to doing what he wants to do so yeah man i think like did jay-z like forever young i don't think he probably did. Not, yeah, <laughs> probably did not. he probably did not yeah. listen, to, listen to that in his car too many that's, times that's, to be honest on um, rotation when he's doing the school run to go uh, dark. Uh, yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. you can listen to that one yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You ain't going to listen to what more can I say on that off the show. Do you get man. what I mean? Yeah. So I hear you. <laughs> yeah, man. I've heard uh, actors and actresses say that. Mm. They say, I do these movies for the masses, and then I do this one for me. Mm. Yeah. They, I, I've heard them say the same thing, so. Yeah, man. I, th I think that's the only... 25, bro? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Old soul, man. If I hadn't figured out a 25, things would look different right now. <laughs> nah, man. Hardy is su super certified, man. Thank you. And I appreciate you coming and giving some of your time and, and talking. And I think you should definitely connect. And, 100%. you know, I know you obviously have a pod as well. Mm. Bring him on, man. He's... You know, no doubt, yeah. yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. He's man. got it, man. Respect, yeah. man. Yes, sir. Appreciate yes, sir. it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was Hardy Caprio. Same here. Jason O.C. Chucky online. Mixtape Madness NFL. Give me the boom, man. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the boom, man. <laughs> Cut. <laughs>